Well, they always seem to call it the uh, absolute worst possible time. Now, telemarketers are under fire from state and federal authorities, not only for their tactics, but for the products they're trying to sell. Our consumer lawyer, Eric Seidel, is with us tonight. You've got a revealing look into, into, into these places, Eric. Tell us about it. That's right, John. You know, last week we told you about a crackdown on telemarketers who sell extended car warranties. Well, a lady who worked as a telemarketer for those warranty companies saw that report and wanted to tell us her side of the experience. I felt awful. Charmaine doesn't want to show you her face, but you may have heard her voice. These people would be upset. Now she's talking about her own feelings, about interrupting your day. They want to know how did you get this number and why are you calling me? Convincing you your car needed an extended warranty. Did you know anything about the warranties that you were selling? No. And you'd be missing out if you didn't sign up. I couldn't give them the truth even if I wanted to. I couldn't tell them, you know, don't buy this. I felt bad. Why couldn't you tell them the truth? Because if I did, well then, you know, they monitor the calls. They would have pulled me off the floor and fired me. The Federal Trade Commission's investigating car warranty telemarketers after more than 300,000 complaints about the calls have come into the Better Business Bureau. I think people's um, tolerance is run out. They block their phone numbers, and they won't give you an address or a company name. Even more troubling, our former telemarketer says many of the numbers the computer dialing system called were to consumers who insisted they were on federal or state do-not-call lists. Some even told her company not to call again. It does not mean anything at all, at all. People would say that they just talked to somebody two days ago and why they're being called again. Even though they said, put me on your do-not-call list. Even though they said, put me on your do not call list. Even more upsetting, Charmaine says some of her calls went directly to medical facilities, nursing homes, and cell phones. We don't know who we're calling, so we're calling emergency rooms. That's not right. Charmaine says she knows her part in these robo-sales pitches wasn't right either, and she approves of the federal investigation. It is a deception because if people are not getting what they paid for, then it should be shut down. Now, the Industry Association tells me they feel the same way. They sent me this statement saying that they support the FTC's crackdown. Meanwhile, federal regulators have already filed several lawsuits against companies that are behind this recent wave of robocalls. They allege that some of the companies violated do-not-call rules and that customers spent thousands only to find out that the warranties didn't cover many types of repairs. Kelly and John? All right. Thanks so much, Eric.